Hey drivers, last year we purchased a car powered entirely by electricity. We call the car EV. And when people first meet EV, their question is, how far can it go? I don't remember being asked that about gas-powered cars, but I get it, range anxiety. And the answer is complicated. <laughs> so I've just charged EV to 80% of the battery's capacity at this new Flow Ultra Charger. And EV's dashboard says I have 430 kilometers of range. Now you're seeing the translation of miles, but I should have started by saying that I'm in Canada. Our dollar is worth less and our miles are shorter. In the Canadian language, we call them kilometers. Eh? And if 260 miles gives you range anxiety, it will get worse, as some of those miles will disappear. The real range is less, potentially as much as 60 miles less, even in the summer. And as you've doubtlessly seen in the news, it's worse in cold weather. Now, I've spent the last few months figuring this out. I bought a grade 9 math workbook to relearn some of my teenage math skills. I'll try and keep things simple, but trigger warning, there is math ahead. Oh, and then this is clearly mansplaining. Now, for the record, although we're very happy with EV, electric cars are not for everyone. And I'm not here to convince you that you should get one. This video is not sponsored. I have not been paid by anyone in any part of the auto industry. Let's start with the manufacturer's claims, 414.6 kilometers. That's from a full 100% charge to zero. And that number is the result of a calculation that starts with EV's battery capacity, which is slightly under 80 kilowatts, and EV's consumption, which is slightly under 20 kilowatts for 100 kilometers. The actual math is 414.6. I'm going to round that to a conservative 400 kilometers. And that means for each percentage point of charge, we should get about four kilometers of driving. Now, if you want to know an electric car's range, ask for the battery capacity and the consumption rating. You do the math. But for optimal battery longevity, the manufacturer recommends that we charge only to 80% and we don't drain below 10%. And that only leaves 70% of the battery capacity for actual driving. And 70% times 4, that's 280 kilometers, which I think is EV's realistic range. And that's how I think I should answer the range question. So why does EV believe my 80% charge can go 150 kilometers further to 430 kilometers? That's over 5 kilometers for each percentage point. But as I said, it's unlikely you'll get that far, maybe by as much as 100 kilometers. Not saying it's impossible, but it is highly unrealistic. And by unrealistic, I mean that they'll disappear. By the time EV's charge gets down to 20%, the range will be about 95, after I've driven about 280 kilometers, which means about 30 miles have disappeared. And those are actual factual numbers because during June 2024, I kept detailed track of EV's data in a spreadsheet. Among the data is the average consumption as reported by EV. It's summer. I'm a prudent driver. And for June, my average consumption, a number EV displays on the dash, was 15 kilowatts per 100 kilometers, uh, quite a bit less than the number used to establish the sales brochure's range estimate. So. It's starting to make sense. 15 kilowatt consumption makes EV's 100% range about 530 kilometers and the 70% range about 375. Maybe that's the number I should give you. But will you get the same driving consumption results? And that might explain the estimate, but not while miles regularly disappear. After adding up the totals of the projected range displayed by EV in my spreadsheet, after charging, I had a total range of 3,000 kilometers, but I drove only 2,600 kilometers while watching 400 kilometers disappear. No wonder people have range anxiety. 
Anyway, now that I know Evie is prone to exaggeration, I can provide my own more realistic estimates. For instance, if I estimate at four kilometers for each percentage point, instead of having miles disappear, I'd get bonus miles. Turn the spreadsheet the other way, and I'd have earned 430 bonus kilometers last month. Even estimating 4.5 kilometers per point would result in a bonus of 200 kilometers. Now, I guess I understand why Evie likes me to believe that a longer range is possible, but I'd rather have it exceed my expectations than continually disappoint me. Anyway, after driving Evie for a year, the only time we think about range is when we're going for a longer drive. Our first long drive last summer was 1,800 kilometers to Prince Edward Island. Now, honestly, even before Evie, we had range anxiety going to PEI because there are long stretches in New Brunswick with very few gas stations. Back in the days before mobile phones and navigation apps, that could be a nerve-wracking challenge. These days, apps let us know where every gas station and electric charger is. And gas or electric, we stop every two and a half to three hours for bio discharge and intake. That works out well. With gas, we'd fill up every other stop. With EV, we charge at every stop. Even in New Brunswick, like the apps, EV's navigation system knows where all the good spots to charge are. Now, charging EV takes longer than filling a car with gas, so we didn't make quite as good time. We allow about 20 to 60 minutes for a combined charge and bio break, and that's the drawback of using electricity to run your car. A 10-hour gas driving day turns into a 12-hour electric day. The benefit is lower maintenance and operating costs, close to zero emissions, and not supporting autocratic dictators with terrible human rights records. At home, we charge EV overnight. And in Toronto, the cost is about 60 Canadian cents for 100 kilometers. Even a fairly efficient gas car would be over $10 for 100 kilometers. Charging costs vary widely on the road, sometimes by time, sometimes by kilowatts, and sometimes it's close to the price of gas. Now, before leaving Toronto for PEI, we did have worries about range and finding charging stations, but by the time we got halfway, we stopped in Quebec City. We didn't worry about range or charging again, not even driving through New Brunswick. Just like a gas car, we start thinking about a fill-up at about a quarter of a charge and then pick a station we like. Now, recently, we were driving with friends and stopped for gas. $80 worth. And when we got home, I wanted to see how far Evie could go for $80. As I said, about 60 cents for 100 kilometers. $80 divided by 60 cents is about 133. Times 100 kilometers, that's over 13,000 kilometers on the equivalent of one tank of gas. Something to think about. As I said, Electric cars are not for everyone. And I've always been a tech early adopter, so I've learned to be persistent and patient when things don't work out as expected. And if that's not your mindset for now anyway, an electric car will just aggravate you. And now maybe that's not the simple answer you were looking for, but I hope that helps make some sense of electric car range. Let me know if you'd like me to revisit this topic in February. I started this script after reading an article by David Berman in the Toronto Globe and Mail. He mentioned that he was seeing numbers that far exceeded his car's expected range. <laughs> Thanks, David. Now, if you have relevant questions or civil comments, I'd love to hear from you. I do read and reply to all. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and enjoy every sandwich.